let's check this guy out. Um, <clears throat> I thought this was all done. Let's see. I think, yeah, there was something. Okay, this doesn't look what they do. Ray takes one positional argument, but two were given. Hmm. This looks like a dependency issue. Or, let's see. We're not making any. see here. Okay. I don't see anything that makes sense for that PyTorch one. Have you looked into that at all? Uh, you mean the PyTorch failing test? Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, I posted a fix on the other PR, and it should be uh, fixed now if you rerun the test. Uh, there was some issue with Pillow, uh, and uh, it was failing due to that. Uh, okay. They have merged a fix now, so it should be fixed. Okay, great. All right. Um, oh, okay, and I see, and we didn't get a review from here. All right, okay. Let's yeah, in look. this in this one, I am using another version of uh, Pillow. Okay. Just for you know, seeing the test. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So you pin it though. Um, okay. So let's see. But I think uh, the issue itself should be fixed now because uh, the one, uh, the PR that was. Uh, uh, posted for this issue has been merged now. Uh, oh yeah, but it, it won't be released. I don't know. Okay, so so we have a so you're telling me that there is a fix in um, PyTorch for this, but it hasn't been released. There's a fix in there's a fix in Pillow for this. Uh, you can oh, see like it Pillow. in the conversation okay. uh, I posted the PR at the top ah okay um, here yeah all right Okay, and maybe, okay, so yesterday, I wonder if they are going to do some kind of hot fix. Okay. Oh, Ruffles. Okay. Let's see. Um, release pillow July. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm wondering. Okay. Has it happened yet? Um, five days ago, 22 commits to master since this release. And that would be this. Okay, so crap. All right, so we haven't, we don't have a next one yet. Um, <clears throat> I wonder how quickly they will get this out, though, because NumPy is a big uh, thing. So, okay, is this it? Yes. Okay, so does it exist? And it came out today. Um, so then maybe we can sidestep this whole thing. 
Um, <clears throat> All right, 8.3, but they tagged the 8.3.1. So, let's see. What's that? Um, release notes. Oh, eight point three. But they've tagged eight. Or did they just do this? Maybe they're like in progress during the release right now because obviously it's supposed to come out today. Um. Releases. Yeah, I didn't I think really... so. Okay, here it is. Two hours ago, tagged. Okay, um, so they're probably doing it at the moment. <laughs> um, all right. <laughs> so I think our problem will be solved soon. That's the good news. Um, <clears throat> so in that case, do we don't need this. Uh, we can just bump the version. Let's see. Where did RPR go? <clears throat> Where do we? Okay, so. And I'm reading this. Okay, so this any stuff. So I just replaced last time. Right, so we didn't have a way to set the layers before, did we? From the oh, we didn't have it uh, for Python API. For the Python API? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, you can still do it with uh, the dictionaries through YAML files. <clears throat> Make sure I haven't forgot to let anybody in. Okay. Um, do you do you want me to explain what I'm doing? Here? Yeah, yeah. Could you explain? Well, okay. So I'm wondering about the current usage. So where is this used? Is really what I'd like. So to currently, uh, you you see the else uh, statement here. Uh, yeah. It's currently. Uh, Changing, it's currently uh, taking in dictionaries, uh, layers in the form of dictionaries through uh, YAML files, and uh, you know reading those as layers, uh, converting those dictionaries into uh, sequential layers. But uh, we don't have uh, a way to directly, uh, you know, read layers from Python API, uh, which I'm supposed to do here. Uh, so uh, okay. first of all, I check if the uh, the base class name is uh, module dict sequential module list or module, and if that's the case, I just you know create another sequential dictionary, uh, and I add these modules directly into it rather than you know passing these yeah. uh, layers to the dictionary function, which would then blow up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. So okay. So we. Overbroad typing dot. Yeah, so that you can't just. <clears throat> so I'm just wondering how it worked in the first place, or if it worked at all. So it didn't work at all in the first place, because we had this dict 
on layers? Yeah. Okay, so we, we weren't able to use this from the command line or from the Python API, really, before this patch. No, we were, uh, we were able to use it from the command line because we were only using uh, dictionaries as input. We were, uh, we were not, uh, you know, oh. creating layers in the form of PyTorch. We were creating layers in the form of okay. dictionaries in uh, y -A dot y -A -M Ah, OK. And so, all right. And we have this fu this functions here in I think base class, and they are converting these dictionaries into uh, PyTorch form. But uh, if we're using Python API, uh, we are uh, you know expecting them to be directly in PyTorch form rather yeah. than dictionaries. So yeah, this one's uh, just you know uh, setting layers to be of any type and uh, deciding where. Uh, whether they are dictionaries and they need to be processed or they need to directly, you know, be a sequential layer and directly go to the model. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. I'm just wondering, okay. <clears throat> um, let's see. I'm wondering really about the implications of changing this, um, yeah. this, this, and then, because this is a, this is a big, bigger change, right? Um, or a more wide, wide yeah. range change. Um, let's see. I, I was thinking that uh, we could add uh, other types uh, which are being handled, uh, you know, uh, after this, after, uh, you know, this condition, we could add those types as well to any in case, uh, you know, we have other any types of which we don't currently. We are not really having fears with the type of any. Yeah, and we really shouldn't is the thing. Because, um, like, should layers to replace the last one. Let me just see. Okay. I'm having, okay. Okay, um, actually, let me do it on this computer. Okay. So. Where did the meeting go? How do I have two windows open? Okay, this is recording. How did I end up with two windows? This will take over, yes. Okay. <clears throat> Where's this? Did it? Okay, I'm gonna try to make a. Is this good enough size text here? <clears throat> yeah, it's readable. Wonder if that. Let's see. Okay. Alright, okay, I think this looks pretty legible. Great. 
Um, let's pull out of the web UI here. Oh, we are already on the branch. So we were looking for any, or so we don't have any anywhere. Okay, where do we? Okay, so none of these are, yeah. I'm looking for similar things to see. And let me make sure there's no I'm looking for similar things here to see if we handled this, you know, to see how else we handled this um, for clues here as to how, just, just to make sure that this is the right way to handle this. Um, so layers ticked. So long as we're consistent, right? Um, all right. Well, it looks like this is the only place right now. So this is PR number eleven twenty-seven. Huh? Is there a way to make I wonder? Is there a way to make the I'm trying to make ah. okay whatever I can't make the presenter full screen in this for recording but that I ah Google okay what PR. I don't believe that that is correct. Um, all right, this is not the right PR then. Okay, yeah, it's not. Um, it's, we're looking at PR. 1148. Okay. All right. I just want to grab some more context on this. <clears throat> so. this what had happened here so pre-trained model config layers add layers so this is when he added the customer This is not related. Uh, uh, this. Okay, so add layers, layer, create layer, value, 
parent last parent. Oh. Um. So this thing was really. Do we have? <clears throat> I want to understand how this look, worked before, before we, um, just to make sure, because I think your patch is probably correct, but I'm sort of looking for, what I'm looking for now is, <laughs> is things that, 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 you know, may be problematic, um, that we maybe should be fixing here rather than in the future, um, you know, while we're at it type of thing. Yeah. So. I think, I think there is a function that, uh, changes it to dictionary, uh, in the function that changes it to create create layer. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah, I think okay, so. so. let's take this, check this out. Uh, where's your tips? Dictionaries always get messy because we don't have... Yes, yeah, so uh, we are currently calling this function uh, whatsoever. Okay. So I'm mainly wondering how because, the hell uh, we were using this um, Model layers, okay. Oh, because he's doing the at. That's what's going on. Okay. And that is interesting right there. Okay, but that's TensorFlow Hub. Okay, oh, that's right. And that has a whole custom parser. That thing. That's a problem. Um, all right, so I was just wondering, you know, how is he defining a dictionary on the command line? Because... <laughs> because that I don't think we didn't have support for that. Um, so I was wondering how the hell that was happening. So we do have support from pulling from the file. Um, yeah, that was sort of my, the main, the main, <laughs> the main point of concern here. Um, okay, so it sort of half works right now. It works from Python and it works from the command line provided you involve another file. So it doesn't work from the command line provide like if you didn't use a file. And that's that's sort of what I was trying to get at here is is it seemed like there was a missing case. Um, yeah. So Okay. Ruffles. Stop. Stop. Um All right, so how do we how do we make sure? Okay, so the command line thing is not going to get fixed in this PR, obviously. Um, <clears throat> I'm just thinking that that dict and 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 any are not the ideal types in the first place for this. So because they're very, I mean, they're very generic, right? Any is going to be as generic as it gets. Um, so let's just make sure. Okay. What format does he have for this? Single layer. So he's just, right now, this stuff is, Okay, I think, yeah, he's parsing out parameters to where does the layers. Model partner examples. Where is that? 
Okay, so he's got layer type, in features, out features. Okay, and these actually come from the... Okay, can you link me to the thing? Come on now. All right, now, now I have to go find the API docs. All right. Um, layer dot linear. All right. So currently we have this YAML. We have YAML files that get parsed into dictionaries. And then the dictionaries are just expanded like this. So I think this relates to, because I obviously, so so we started on this path because we, we you know, the, the typing any raised a red flag here. Um, so let me just do it. Uh, Because, so just to recap, because that was a long thing. So, so we went down a long road here because we're reviewing this and we see that uh, type equals any uh, stuff changes into convert value in the base config stuff. And we see this type any uh, change here. Um, and so now we're wondering, okay, well, well why, are we, why are we being so generic? Um, and it's because we want to support taking uh, Py, PyTorch objects directly, right? Yeah. And then we also want to maintain support for taking dictionaries. Yes. So, um, we probably want to do a typing union on this. Um, is there, are there more things that don't, because this essentially is, you know, a type like you're doing a typing dot union type of thing here um right i mean so if if you're because because looking at the way your code is implemented you're basically saying hey any of these types otherwise yeah. if it's dictionary it goes here right so we should probably be using typing union on this right yeah makes more sense okay um so let's jump over here and make sure that these are nice types that will handle this correctly. So, okay. Uh, hold some models and a dictionary. And get our key. Sequential, okay. Uh, sequential module list module module text. So it looks like yeah, we can probably just go ahead and throw in the types into union here. I wonder what the hell's gonna happen. So, okay, so what, what may happen here is that we may end up with, with more sort of base config changes. But I'm thinking, I think we want to, if instance value dict type class dict return value. Because, all right, so this seems like something we might want to do anyways. Um, just because that seems like a pretty generic thing that might happen a lot, right? Um, we're always using dictionaries for more abstract stuff. So, but we really should be doing. Okay, so this is basically not what it was. Okay, so this is the real fix here. So set type to dict if layers can stick. Okay. 
Oh, and that was no, that was the old code. So this is really the end change. Anything, anything that happens within these config code things can just cascade and cause massive problems. So that's why I'm like looking at this so hard. Sorry. Um, I mean, obviously, all the tests pass. So. So if the time of the analyst do we deal with any ever, anywhere else special right so we didn't have the type as it no, we weren't using we just verified that so we just verified that we aren't using um that we aren't using any anywhere <clears throat> so this yeah no, i also checked it before uh, while working on the PR, uh, we weren't using it as a field anywhere. Okay. Um, we had also talked about this, um, so we're also we we're also thinking about okay, how does this relate to? I can't remember who we were talking about. Uh, who, who I was talking about with this? Um, who do we need to let in? Okay. Um, but that we want to be able to create config objects out of the inputs to operations. And it looks like a few of these use any. So I'm wondering how this is going to affect that. So how is this going to affect that? Those need to accept anything. So there's, on the one hand, it's like, okay, for configuration, really we should be using, um, any, any is, is such a, it's so broad, right, that it, it's kind of, it's, it, it doesn't really tell us anything, right? Um, so when we, it would be best if we don't, you know, if people don't type things as any. Um, now, if there's now like with when you're configuring objects and stuff you know usually ideally you would never type them as any um now when you're creating up because for example like like in this case you know we know the types right it's either dict module dict sequential modulus or module um so let's just go to that um where are you guys And dict. All right, so so that's sort of what this is the same same thing, right? And this would be basically no change. Now the question is, what happens in the typing code when this when this takes place? Um, and I think it probably grabs the first one here. Um, to handle conversions. Um, okay. Oh, God, this code is a mess. Uh, let's see. Okay, annotation. Oh, maybe I'm thinking of the automated definition creation code. Um, possible types, arg type, annotation, get origin. Try to see if the values of the type is supposed to be already. Ah, okay. This stuff. So if it's already a module deck, sequential list, module list, or module, possible types equals Git origin annotation 
Okay, so we haven't changed in the mix arguments. So just type in union. Check if the value is already in any of the types listed acceptable types in union by calling get args. Okay, so this would validate, this code here validates that it's either module dict, sequential module list, or module or dict. Okay, so that's great. Um, so it looks like we'll be fine there. Okay, the one place where that might break down is something like um, um, the operation stuff, but that's not a problem for now. So this should be good. Um, <clears throat> okay, so now this is what this looks like. Um, and where's PyTorch here? These are modules.container and then modules container. Uh, module dict all those that default path or how do you import them? Uh, can we import these top level? Touch pre chained. Okay, it's just nn dot. All right, so now we've got this more explicit here. Um, and then, okay, so this is the create layer code. I think the create layer code stuff is, okay, so layer type linear, layer type, I'll drop out linear. Okay, we shouldn't have done it this way. All right, so I think the main thing here is that I think you you've got it right. So this is the fix. This you've got the correct fix for the PyTorch API here. Um, so we'll suspend this any change right now. We're gonna we're gonna back that stuff out. This obviously is the main. You know, this is really the thing you care about. Um, We'll bump this. Did they release it? No. All right, well, they're going to be releasing any time now, so. All right, so we'll make sure that this we will make sure that this is <clears throat> 8.3.1 um, and then we'll just wait because it looks like they'll merge it today so This is what I do to check. Okay, if I can ever, if I can't remember how we've uh, uh, formatted commit messages before for things, then I check this. Um, so if we just change something in there, so all right. So we didn't really say anything here so so plans or ruffles get over here um all right what 
notice the speed. Um, this is just like, do we have a qualifier for something like this? Um, I don't think we do. I'll just say requirements. The dog is going nuts on me this morning. Requirements. Um, <clears throat> pillow. Come here. Oh. All right, there you go. Now you're happy. Um, bump pillow to 8.3.1. Um, and this was because of, this is a array compatibility fix. Oh my God, Ruffles. This is what I'm dealing with right now. This guy. Related, uh, what was our issue number? Do you remember the issue number? Fixes 1147. Related 1147 and 1148, let's just put. Okay. Understand why it doesn't go sometimes. Ah. S M. Because I ended with the trailing. What the hell? Why is Git not running? Okay. Why was it? Git just doesn't want to run. Hooks pre commit. Oh, it's black. It's taking forever. All right. Um, <clears throat> All right. So we'll bump that. And then that means that we want to change that commit there. Okay. Which was, okay, it looks like we'll drop that temp, temp fix CI error patch. Um, and we'll change it to this and then we'll just wait for them because it'll come out at some point today. Um, and then let's see. And then as far as this create layer stuff goes, I think this is good. We just want to make sure that it's union. I think... Set type to dict if layers get stick. I'm wondering. I'm wondering about this because it seems like we might still want this patch here, right? Um, uh, would it? Uh, would the type in the args still be any? 
Um, to the union. Well, I'm thinking. I'm thinking that this might make sense. Um, this might make sense. Let's see. Is instance I. I'm wondering what to do about this because this is obviously there's there's obviously like an open issue here. It's not related to the current issue that you're solving, right? Um, but like, what happens if somebody type typecasts something for in a config as any, right? And and right now, you know, bad things. But after this patch, it works, right? Because um, I assume it just blew up before, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. So it's cause, so I'm thinking we may want this commit. You know, we may want to merge this commit as part of this PR here. The question is what are the implications of that? Right? So the the benefit is that it doesn't blow up anymore, you know, should somebody do that. The downside is then, you know, um the downside is, well, we need to figure out um, if there are any downsides, right? <laughs> I'm not. I'm not sure why it would still blow up. Because uh, what this uh, condition does is it returns if the value. Um, second. Yeah, if it it returns if the value is in a dictionary. Uh, but if it's otherwise, it would uh, still blow up now. Well, if, if we don't return it. Yeah, so, well, <clears throat> I mean, if you, let's see, you do, you basically, if it's a dictionary, it'll be fine. Otherwise, you just return whatever it is already. Um, yeah. So this, anything coming down from the Python API that comes through here will be fine. Um, but anything yeah. coming down from the command line API, it will. It would also be what? With this code. I yeah. Thought, I thought you were saying that uh, we can remove this code. Oh, no. Yeah. I think, yeah. So that's that's what I'm saying is I think we want to keep this code, right? Um, and I'm just wondering if there's any yeah. downside to the way it is, or maybe we need another little if statement or something. So, because I think this is good to have either way. Um, yeah, but uh, does uh, the argument uh, type have any uh, in this case when we're using union? Well, no. So this this won't. I guess what I'm saying here is this code won't be activated within the context. So within the so the the PR that you're doing really is about you know PyTorch, right? Now we ended up with yeah. this. Uh, change in base. The question, and, and it seems like we may want to keep this change, even though we're going to put the PyTorch stuff over to be union based, um, just as like you I know, see. what? I see. Okay, yeah, yeah, and yeah. So I'm thinking is so okay. What 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 we can just run through another scenario. So if we get, so say we get something in on the command line, and it was a uh, let's see, so value dict, else return value. So we get something in on the command line. Uh, the only other thing I can think of is just a list. So, because will it make a list out of anything? I'm wondering, okay. Because we can get dictionaries, we definitely know we'll, we might end up with dictionaries because of uh, because of you know the the at and then the file name for the YAML files. Um, <clears throat> yeah. But then they should have just typed it. It's it's good to support this, but it creates problems, right? Because then all of a sudden you don't know certain data types and you really should know them, right? And then you're not actually using the config infrastructure. Because that's actually what happened here. This stuff is not, this should not be like this. Um, 
we should be using the config infrastructure to do this. Um, layer type linear features out features. Let's make an issue for this and then just post it in an issue so that we're tracking it. Um, okay, so base uh, convert value. Um, so what would we say here? Base convert value um, support for any type typing dot any oops okay great Oh, hey, wow, much faster way to create an issue. Um, so now we'll track this here. All right, and we'll put, actually, we should, I should have just put the patch in the body. Um, diff. All right, so what are our notes on this? Uh, <clears throat> so essentially, we were going to say, um, currently, um, config objects uh, do not support when a property is labeled with typing.any. Um, it will throw an, it, it will, does it throw an exception? Uh, when? If you, if you put it as any, um, without this patch, does it throw an exception? Um, I don't think I tried without the patch. Okay, yeah, you just try, you, you did the patch, okay. Um, Okay, well, then I won't say, I'm going to just say it won't work. Um, do not support when a property is able to be done any. Uh, we need to figure out how to support this or if we should. Okay, wait. So then, wait, we forgot about this. Where did that any go? All right, so oh, you mean uh, after after putting the any into field, uh, you mean it, it blows up? Yeah. So if we put, you know, if we created a, a config with type any, that you know, does does the existing code without this patch throw an exception? Yeah, uh, it it blows up because okay. uh, you're kind of trying to uh, create a dictionary. It's expecting a dictionary. Yeah. Uh, from you and um, uh, you're sending other things in. So yeah, it blows up. Okay, great. Um, so we need to figure out how to support this. Um, ideally, uh, developers would put the correct type. However, there are cases uh, such as operations uh, where typing dot any is a perfectly valid um, input uh, type definition. Uh, or it might be a common. Oops. <clears throat> Uh, and, and a good example of this is uh, 
Um, that. Where did it go? Ruffles. Ruffles. A good example is. Where'd you go? Create mapping. Yeah, so. Or like parse or what was it yeah print output and create mapping right you know so these 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 ones are never going to change type of thing um they're always going to accept an any um because that's just what they do um um and so well, i think i was talking about this with suck shop so you guys probably not not fully clued into why I'm so concerned about this. Um, so, and I am so concerned about this because um, because if we can get the if we can create config objects out of the definitions uh, or the input definitions of operations then all of a sudden we can call any operation from the command line very easily um, and, and essentially an operation becomes, you know, everything becomes the same thing. So all our command line classes can become operations um, and we don't have to do the whole class-based approach um, and this everything is in operation. And if all the command line things are operations, so for example, we're dealing with, so Oh, okay, high level is a good example, right? So we have all this, you know, we're doing all this stuff in high level, right? And these are, well, these are pure Python functions. We also have all this stuff in CLI, right, ML. Um, and this is basically, you know, these are calls into high level, but really they just wrap it at such a minuscule level here that like it, it should just be, you know, we should just be calling this. Um, we should just be calling high level accuracy and this is just a python function so we should be able to decorate it with op and if we can decorate it with op and op also creates config for the inputs then all of a sudden we don't even need this whole file right um because all of this stuff um just becomes just becomes basically a, a pass through to the high level code um, um okay That makes sense. Okay. So, ideally, developers in the uh, kitchen. Uh, we have this tentative fix so, uh, provided a tentative fix to this issue. Um, we should further explore okay so in what exactly so so this is value dict okay is there going to be cases i think i think at this point okay everything comes through convert value is the thing so yeah so All the even if it's if it's defined through a Python API, if it comes through the HTTP API, if it comes through the command line, it all comes through here. So when it comes through the HTTP API, it could possibly be you know a list or a dict um, or a float or right. It could be any of the standard types. So and that, and that's fine, right? So type class equals dict, and then it'll do the right thing. So if Okay, if NR, so I think we might want an is list here. Um, I think we might want to do is instance list just to, ch to cover that case um, in case NR is also a thing. So, or why would NR get set? I think NR only gets set when it is a list or is instance value. If not NR. And where does NRGs get set? NRGs, if field type is a list or a tuple. Okay, so it wouldn't hit that case. 
Um, so what if we have, okay, type class, type class, parser helper, type class is not stir. God, this is such, it's so hard to do all this config stuff. And that's why the code's such a mess. So I think, you know, I think it may be fine with, so if the type is a list, so if we happen to get a list, this is the only place where this, you know, this could get tricky, I think, is if it's a list or a tuple. Um, now, through the HTTP API, you might get a tuple through the, or HTTP API, you would may get a list. You may get a list through the Python API. You may get a list or a tuple through the Python API. You'd never get a tuple through the HTTP API. Um, <clears throat> and in the case that it is a list that you're getting passed in, um, then if NRs, so we skip this. Um, I think we may just need to add the if list or is if tuple case. Type class Okay. Class value, but this is data classes. Convert value, type class value. Okay, and that's not going to do anything if we already have a list or a tuple. All right, okay, so I think the only thing that we need to do to this actually is really just say um, if I return value, will it do anything with the value? So the value is list typing any. Yeah, I think this is fine. I think this is fine. Because um, what happens here if dict? What was the deal with that? Why would we need to do? Why would we not just return? Do you remember why we didn't? We wouldn't just return value in either case here. Uh, yeah, because it's later uh, inverting it. Um, uh, which function is this? What's the name of the This function? is, so we're in um, convert value in DFML base PY on line 161. So, because you, we, the, the patch you added says, you know, if arg type is any, then check if we're an instance of, <clears throat> check if we're an instance of, of dict, in which case set type class equals dict, and it looks like an args only gets set if it's a list or a tuple, so we're not going to hit that. We're not going to hit this dot load because it's dict. Um, we're not going to hit this because it's not a stir. We're not going to hit this because it's not a data class. Um, Otherwise, we hit this, in which case the annotation is typing any. We check the possible types. And, OK, arg type. But arg type really should be type class at this point. <clears throat> type class equals type, type equals type. Yeah, I'm wondering, like, if it's any, then maybe we should just return value, right? Like, do we get anything here? Do, like, do we gain anything by by this if statement? Like, this if statement within the uh, if statement? Can you, can you scroll down a little? Yeah. Um. Yeah, so uh, this if convert value is equal to 
type class uh-huh. value. Uh, what does this type class do? Uh, because this is the one that uh, that gets called uh, and blows yeah. everything up uh, in case it's not a dictionary. Yeah. So, well, let's see. So, where's type lookup? So, I think this does. Okay. So, I think this just does a, a, a Python lookup. Um, that just that just casts it to for example if you had um it's just uh it's it's like saying for example so if type class was dict this would be value equals dict value right oh, oh i see so in which case you know and, and if value is already a dict then we wouldn't need to do that um, so I think we can yeah. probably just safely return value um, in this case. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Well, I guess we'll just do equals equals. Okay. I think we can safely return value. Okay, great. Um, I think we figured this out. Um, so this is sort of a separate thing now. Uh, where was that diff? All right, so let's just post this. Here. Uh, okay, so. Uh, we determined that uh, it's that it's safe to just return the value in this case. All right, and we'll just. Apply this here, patch. Um, all right. Um, all right. So this is sort of separate thing. Um, so let's just take that out. Uh, let's. We'll take it out of this set of commits here. So we'll drop this guy and. We'll drop this guy. Okay. 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 So, yes, this one we will drop. Nine. Okay. Don't need that anymore. And then we also don't need this one anymore because we already set. So, E. Nine. nine. Because we'll set it in this one here. Okay. Oh, I, I lost pre commit. All right, now let's take a look at this. Okay, so we have the pillow fix. Um, okay, and this was, okay, there's that fix. Anyways, okay, so you had it like this. All right, now, well, now I'm kind of concerned because you had it like this and then you changed it. <laughs> so maybe it didn't work out. 
I didn't see that. So. Uh, yeah. I did it uh, for some reason, and I don't remember it now. Okay, so let's see, because that's interesting. Um, yeah, that's interesting, because... Because if you did it for some reason, and then it ended up only working with this, then obviously return value wasn't good. Um, Let's just leave it as an issue then. Okay, we'll we'll leave it as an issue. Um, okay, because I was gonna just make it. We determine. Okay, we are not sure if we can safely uh, fix this issue by simply returning the value. Further investigation. Is needed. All right, all right. There we go. All right, so And so where did that go here? So let's just take out that change there. Okay, so now we have the pillow thing, we have the module thing, that one can just get squashed into the one before it. Um, So this guy convert value is just this. So we can just squash this into the one before it, which is where we add module list and stuff. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, now let's take a look at this. So we have the pillow. We have the typing any, which we're going to change in a second here. And okay, this is not this is not us. So. All right, so then we basically just determined that this needs to be the union. Um, This was our union fix. Ruffles, ruffles. <clears throat> so, okay. This is our union fix here, um, but okay, we just need to import union. Right, this thing is there. We go. Okay, whatever. All right, so this is the union change, and then and let's make sure we have an N N imported here. Yep. And I think this is good now. So is there anything that we were forgetting on this at this point? Uh... 
do you remember anything? Did we cover everything we just talked about? Um, after uh, changing it to union, we also need to check if the ARBs are having type union now. ARBs are type union. Um, sorry, can you say that again? Uh, after changing the field to union, uh, we also need to check if uh, the type in ARBs is union like before we were checking if it was any. Okay. But you mean in base and convert value? Uh, yeah, I think that was where we were checking. Okay, yeah, so, so we were looking for any, but I think so we already have code to handle. Oh, yeah, do we have code to handle union? Oh, yeah, that's a really good point. All right, so if it's union, then, oh, God. All right, so if type class, arg type. Okay, so if type in arg. Okay, so let's check out. Um, Okay, so this is the... I mean, if it's union, we still uh, want to do the same thing, right? Like we were doing with any... Well, that's what I'm wondering here is, is well, if it's union, we may want to try to do convert value for each kind of type in the union. Um, so, for example, right, so if we... So let's see. Type, field type, uh, yeah, origin field type. Okay. So I'll I'll run we'll run through the code and and, and I think uh, it'll make a little more sense here. So um, of what I was saying. So basically, so you're you're saying okay, well, okay. So do, we we had just we just had this right essentially. Okay, right, yeah, you know, we know we had the other if statement, but that's that's what we're talking about here, right? Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so and you're saying, okay, well, what about the equivalent for... Yeah, because I'm not sure if you're handling that. Uh, yeah, I don't think we are. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't think we are. So where is... Let's take a look. So, and that's going to be another one for operations that'll be definitely applicable here. So, union, 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 yeah, okay, operations love this stuff. Um, okay. Okay, oh, here, wait, this is interesting. PyTorch Neural Network Config. Union Network Model. So, it is being used here. Um, Okay, so we have a config class that uses union already, which is interesting. So now the question is, does this actually get called anywhere? There's no network model config. So maybe... I think uh, it would be in the PyTorch base class. Yeah, so PyTorch base class. Oh, net. Right, okay, so... PyTorch net. Okay, and what was that? This is the neural network config, and that's network. So PyTorch net network. Okay, so we're loading from a dictionary in that case. Um, so a network. Network, loading from a dictionary, loading from a dictionary. Ruffles, ruffles, ruffles. Um, we're loading from a dictionary. 
So once again, I think this has been sidestepped because uh, sidestepped slash simplified because we're only the the current usage is just a dictionary, and, and so we haven't run into anything. Um, so in that case, current usage is a dictionary. So this MK arg must be functioning correctly because obviously we make an arg at a we we make this the args are an intermediate representation that we had that's a holdover from the old code. Um, so everything goes through mkarg based on the, the field type and gets these. Uh, oh, actually, yeah, it actually creates the arg parse version of these things for the command line. So, <clears throat> so, so this must be doing the right thing for the union somehow. Ruffles, ruffles. Oh. Um, let's see. Uh, so it must be doing the right thing now because it works yeah. when it gets a dictionary. <clears throat> um, maybe we should just, maybe, well, let's just throw it in the CI and see what happens. Um, because if it, if it, if it doesn't blow up right now with a union, I mean, I don't, I don't, we can dig deeper, but we can also just, you know, throw it at the wall and, and see if it sticks. So, yeah. That's funny. Okay. So, yeah, we put this in. This was our union change here. Okay, so this is this change, which is the meat of the patch here. And this is what let you, you know, so this is, oops. Let's just put that this is related to um, the, where was it you were doing? Uh, what what's that example that it's related to? Is it is it for one that's not posted in a PR yet or? Yeah, it isn't posted in a PR. Okay. Um, do you have code for it? Can you make a PR? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Okay, because that way, that way, when we come back in the future, we'll know why the hell we did this. <laughs> uh, yeah. As usual, we always forget, right? Um, so let's see. Related, you know, to put PR number. Add support for additional layers. Via uh, Python API. And then let's also say so. Previously, um, only dict to uh, PyTorch. Uh, Line a dict which would then be converted to a PyTorch object was supported. And now PyTorch objects can be supplied directly. All right. Um, um, so we want to add the related PR number two. Um, uh, Comment. Commit. Commit. 
message. Okay. Um, by okay, and this is PR. How do we see which PR we're on? GHPR. It'll be nice to see which one we're on. GitHub con. Add a review to upload this. Okay, okay. It was. 1148. 1148. I'm liking this command line client. Um, okay, so great. All right, cool. We're done here. Sorry that took so long, but I think we, um, I think we figured out a lot of stuff. So. Um, yeah, definitely. I'm glad you did not do this. <laughs> uh, creating the yellow one said they know about it. Okay, so soon. Okay, so there was one more thing that this raised. Uh, so we're going to push. So this is the meat of the patch here. There is bumping pillow. Um. And there was one more thing we were going to do here. Um, what was it? Okay. What was it? Damn it. Are we in the middle of a rebase? I feel like there's something we're forgetting here. So basically, we recorded the change. We recorded, we documented the thing that we just found in an issue, which is the support for typing dot any. any. Um, no, it's open, still open, right? We uh, oh, I remember what the last thing was. Okay, so. And I think Sakshan may have an open issue for this, anyways. So this should not be this should not be this way. Um, we should be using the the config infrastructure for this, right? Um, and I think the, the the core reason why create layer exists is really because there is no um, support for dictionaries. Um, there is no support for dictionaries. Base convert value. Where is this? Okay, so this, where is this? So the config infrastructure doesn't have support for doing nested dictionaries at the moment, which is, I think, why this is the way it is. 
Um, but if it if we don't have an issue to track that, we definitely need an issue to track that. Convert value, place args and config method. That ability to specify this looks like a promising one. Special I commit. Okay, no, that's not the one. Um, this might be the one, which is a really poorly named. Pro okay. Unified configuration, arg to plugin. We have something that does this. Um, I think it was the. What do you guys remember? Um, there's an issue. There's an issue with a bunch of command line flags in it. Um, ah, okay. Well, what, okay. Uh, what is this thing? I would like to get this recorded here. So, all right. It doesn't really matter for the context of this. But I don't want to forget to go do this. So where is, let's just see if there's something for model PyTouch to track this. I think he had, so add Python API support for defining last layers when using pre-trained models. So is this what you just did? Uh, yeah. Okay, great. Um, okay. And did we have a fixes tag on that? All right, so this, okay, so we need, we should put a fixes on this. Uh, we should always put it in the, in the commit message. Um, because if you put it in the PR, I don't know if it will close the, don't know if it closes this, if you just put it in the description. Um, so... Okay, good job getting this. All right, okay, so <clears throat> so this will close. Um, okay, this. Entry point style loaders. And that is why, okay, so this one is related here. So, because this is why, right, man, I don't know where the hell that config stuff went. Maybe it's those sources. So this is also related because this create layer code is, this existed because, this exists because we couldn't, we didn't know what the types of these, where is that? I am. 
So with the in features and out features and all this stuff. So the reason why this create layer stuff exists is because we couldn't create config objects out of the layers because they didn't have type annotations. So this is also related to that. Um, did you push up the code yet? Uh, yeah, I'm doing this. Okay, Sorry. cool. Yeah. No worries. No worries. Uh, you can, you can. If, if I'll, I'll just let you add that trailer there. Um, I'll just add, let you amend that commit. Um, when you, when you're finished with that, I just thought if you'd just done it, then we're good. Um, great. All right. Okay. Long, long talk there, but um. Uh, all right, I'm really pissed off that I can't find that issue, but whatever. Um, and this says we've mentioned it, right? Great, okay, so now it references there. Ah, I love linking all these things together. It helps us figure out what the hell happened. Um, okay, we're good, right? I think we're good on that one. So you'll, um, you will, um, wait, please, some cleaning minutes. So we had, this was the, uh, Support for additional layers in Python API. All right. So, oh, Sudhanshu, do you do you remember what issue? Um, do you remember what issue? tracks um, the there's an issue that tracks the support for dictionary data types in uh, the config code we were trying to find that if you don't remember it that's fine I'm not sure if you've run across it. Um, uh, I don't remember. I guess. Okay. It exists somewhere. I know we have an issue for it. So, um, okay, whatever. All right, all right. Not, not incredibly important. All right, so Hashim, anything else from you today? Um, I see you have those other PRs. Let's see what happened with the CI on those. There's some kind of weird... Um, so this guy... Let's see. I think I rebased things around to make it look... Uh, the, the commit message is a little prettier. Um, or something, yeah. 
yeah, I think I just rebased the commit message is. Um, but then we started seeing weird. What was this? That's probably something I screwed up. Um, oh no, this is the damn. This is the damn NumPy thing, isn't it? Okay, well now I'm glad you figured that out because. Uh, oh come on. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. So this is a stupid NumPy thing. So. Do we have an issue for that? Right. Oops. Oh, shit. Fuck. Oh, God. Oh, what did I do? Oh, wow. I just tried to create an issue with the whole trace pack. Oh, okay. That was bad. Uh, the title is... Um, okay, so this is like a... Uh, where was... What was the main... Thing that was what was failing here. So this is a torch, a model PyTorch uh, failure due to uh, NumPy. Or was this? Wait a minute. Is this? Yeah. Okay. So this is the pillow thing. Okay. Uh, NumPy. Pillow and compatibility. Okay. <clears throat> okay. I'm trying to figure out, sorry, bear with me here as I try to figure this out, but I think this is going to make our meetings a lot faster if we can just create things from the command line. So, label, okay, kind, CI, failing, um, and what else do we have? Yeah, bug. Um, and then we'll just cat the body in. So, Uh, okay, where were we running into this? So we were running this to this in here, and then the fix is fix is in that other commit. Okay, so it's in here. So now we got to go add the fix to that. Okay. Um, requirements. And that is 1148. All right, so 1152. Why is it so slow? Fixes. 1152. All right, so then we'll merge this guy after you post the code. So you'll post the code. Uh, I've posted the code. Okay, you did. What's the PR?
It's 11.51. 11.51. Boom. All right. Okay. So, um, we'll wait on the, okay. So this is, all right. So this, we'll wait on the CI for this one. So, um, Wow, that was that generated a lot of stuff. Okay, so we'll wait on the CI for this one, and then after that, um, we will. Okay, so this will fix this issue. In which case, it's not a problem. Model PyTorch is probably failing for the same thing, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so that's good. So then we can merge this PR. Um, and this was the, okay, great. Um, and then I think we had, yeah, okay, great. Base. Perfect. Oh man, I'm loving this thing. Okay, so then, <clears throat> so we merge this. Great job. Nice. All right. Excited to see that on the doc site. Um, oh Jesus! Stop. Ah. Great. Um, so we merge that. Add support for additional layers in Python. Oh, I got something. Merged. Um, this one we're waiting on the CI. Waiting on CI uh, fixes uh, NumPy. Okay, issue with uh, PyTorch or Pillow. Um, and then this is waiting. Actually, we're waiting on uh, release from Pillow. 8.3.11. That's convenient. They'll do a release today. Which... Yeah. Sometimes you have to wait months. That's how we ended up with that data classes hack fix from somebody installing data classes where they shouldn't be. Um, all right. Great, great, great. Okie dokie. So, um... This one is, okay, wait a minute. Um, shit, no, I just realized, okay. So we merged, wait, did we just merge one that didn't get tested? Damn it. Okay, so wait, the one with tests, where's the one with, okay, no, we merged the one that has the test, perfect. Okay, so yeah. this one merged, this PR adds, Testing for all uh, notebooks. All right, great. So now we need to rebase in master to the other notebook PRs. So we need to rebase it in here and then here so that they get tested. Do you want me to do that now or you want to do it? Uh, I guess I would do it because uh, we still yeah. have to wait for the test. Cool. Um, and wait a minute. Add it up. 
Wait a minute, how did this happen? What? I'm confused. Oh, reference this. Oh, it shows it like almost in line. Okay, okay, wait, wait, okay, that's fine. All right, okay, so you're going to rebase those in. And then, did you need any feedback on these right now? Did we... Because this uh, is the one, one that you just posted, right? This transfer learning, this is the one. Yeah, that, yeah. Yeah, so I... Uh, do you need do you need feedback on this right now, or is it still um, work in progress? It's quite messy, and I'm I'm still waiting on uh, some a few queries from uh, Sakshan. Okay, great. So, so I think after that it could be yeah. Great. So we'll put that Sakshan is reviewing that. So uh, transfer learning PR. Uh, still work in progress, section I'm reviewing. Great. Okay, so where what else do we have for you then? Uh, that's about it. That's about Thank it? You. All right, cool. Thank you. Yeah. All right, Sudhanshu, how's it going? Yep, it's going great. All right, good to hear. So, uh, yeah, so I just wanted to let you know that uh, uh, there are two pull, uh, pull requests which are ready for review. Okay, great. Uh, one of them is uh, uh, SKLN scorer, and another one is the uh, cleanup operations. Okay. So those two are ready for review. And uh, this week, I will be starting the work with uh, shorthand creation. Shorthand creation. Oh, nice. Great. Fantastic. All right. So, um, Three, three seventy. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> all right. So I can review them offline. Okay. Do you want to do you want to do it offline or do you want to do it now? It's fine if you uh, want to do it offline if it's getting late, but let's see. Uh, so I have pushed all the changes. You can review it. Okay, so operations data. And I'm fine with both. Okay. Online and offline. Let us take a look. Let's just take a look since we're here. Oh man, lag. Yep. Okay. Uh, wow, why is this so laggy? Okay. Yeah, let me just pull it down. Eleven forty nine. Okay, PR eleven forty nine. Oh wait, this was the this is eleven forty nine. And then this is um second story is eleven fifty six. Eleven forty six. Yeah, let's check out the score first. Yep. I have also written the tests for 
all of the classifier models with all of the all of the models with all of the scores. So there are like 576 tests. Uh -huh. All right, Pete. That's great. That's great. Okay. That's great. Okay. Add tests for scores. All right. So add scores. Okay. Second scores. Second so score classes. Okay. And second so score class classes. Two, three, four, five. Add test for scores. Let me just see. Add second score classes. Okay, add scores. Okay, so minor thing. Minor thing here. Um, so let's. Let's make sure the commits get added in the way that they would like so we can't we don't want to have the add score commits and add score scripts these last two be first because if we applied those individually they wouldn't work uh, right so because this is like what you did here is first you added the base classes right yeah. Then you add the psychic scores mm -hmm. classes. Mm -hmm. And then you add the tests. Then you export them. Then you register the entry point. So if we applied each of these individually, it would work. Okay, great. Um, okay. Base class for psychic scores. Let's go take a look at these guys. Oops, oh god, so many open. Alright. So we really care about this guy first. And then. So numpy import lib config context score great okay score you run the prediction and you do the score great. Uh, okay. So, is there a way? How did you find these that require a pause label? So, actually, uh, when I was like writing the tests for them, I actually found that the default pause label was actually one, but uh, we have to keep it either two or four. Okay. Do you know why? Because I think in the documentation it was written like if you are doing like some binary classification you have to do one, and if like there are multiple classes classification you are doing, you have to keep it 
two or four, something like that. So initially I was thinking like to make it a config, but uh, then I thought it's mostly like a constant value. Okay. Which has to be passed. If you do multiple conversion, you should use two or four. Do you remember like what page in the docs might have said that? Uh, yep, I can find that page. Okay, yeah, let's try to link that over and let's just go ahead and make that a parameter. Um, These NumPy base are now their scikit base. Um, metrics. Yeah, did you find it? I'm pasting the link on Gitter. You can Great. have a look there. Okay, so F1 score. Okay, so let's take a look here. So below it is written. seen it and get her or great okay so so in your was label Okay, so for that was precision, average precision score score. Okay. Um, so for every one of them, uh, it's actually the same thing. Okay. So in this case, so you were setting them to two. Okay. Okay, um, so let's export that positive. And actually, the thing is, so let's also, so we talked about, so pause label set to two for some scores. Um, uh, let's export, or let's, Allow for all score dot score or all dot, dot score keyword arguments via config. 
Um, so let's and then let's just do. Um, I think we can move this around here. So the config right now is, um, nothing. nothing. Yep. Okay. It's a default. All right. So, <clears throat> so we have the functional step partial method. Um, so we should just be able to do make config inspect uh, let's just take a look at these guys source code here let's probably did it for stocks numpy Yeah, these things do get parsed. Yeah, what? Uh, previously, like I was trying to do it the config way only. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when we do the make numpy config, yeah, that was working fine. It used to give all the documentation numpy documentation. So it did work. Yeah. Okay, great. Let's give it a shot here, right? Um, so make config numpy. Okay, so make config properties. Okay, so what happens here if we have properties? So properties is a dict of tuple field. So make config numpy, um, and we'll say properties equals properties. So Uh, so config so if um so let's just move this stuff over here one second. Psychic score base. So, and this I think will be will be a little cleaner, um, because then we have specific class names in uh, in the in the part where we're defining specific classes. Um, and then we want to set pause label. So, custom config for some scores where when writing tests, we found that the default pause label is one. Um, and then we, if we, uh, we override that default value of one two 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 uh, so why are we doing that again two because we're doing we want to multi-class uh, classification Uh, 
All right. Uh, okay. I think that's a weird enough comment there. I think we captured it. Um, so, and then this would be, what are they called? So this is just name, right? So name or no, this would be. So we'll just drop the score. So if name in. Yep, score from the last. Uh else do we drop if you are doing anything? Uh, sorry, what? Just that's drop, good. drop. Yeah. yeah, okay, yeah, cool. Okay, I thought that's what you said. All right, so let's do properties. Um, can we override is the question. So... <clears throat> So this make config looks like it's in base. So make config. Uh, So properties equals none properties that option numpy doc string args. Well that's kind of problematic. Um, so properties is none numpy doc string args. So right now it looks like we're overriding Well that's annoying. So right now it looks like we are taking the we can define properties, but then we immediately override them, like uh, with the numpy style doc string arg. So, or if properties equals n is none. Yes, and the default value actually gets it takes the default values. Okay, yeah. So let's not do that, right? <laughs> um, so that was an oversight. Um, so let's fix. We'll fix that, but. Um, so properties, okay, so basically properties equals um, pause label. And I take it it's an int, right? Yes. Okay. Int field. Um, Int or stir. Oh. Int or stir. Oh. What? The label of the positive class and positive. So it can be let's find these guys what we're talking about here. It's a recall score. Recall score. Okay, maybe that's not a good one to search for here. Where are we in ranking? Uh, 
Average precision score, pause label one. Okay, but we were looking for, what was it? We're looking for F1 score. Okay, that's an easy one to search for. Oh, okay, no. Uh, F1 score, F1 score. Well, where do you come from, F1 score? SQLearn metrics. Um, from dot import F1 score. On Gitter, I have sent a link. From there, you can uh, get every score which I have implemented. Okay, great. Perfect. In the classification, you can get it. Nice, thank you. Okay, so pause okay. label. I'm wondering about the stir value here. Okay, class four. Data are multi class or multi labels. They will be annoyance ignored. <gasps> Setting labels equals pause label and average does not equal binary will report scores for that label only. Um, this doesn't tell us what to put as a stir value. <laughs> um, okay. That's okay, we have the source code. Um, so F beta score. Do you know? Do you know what the stir value might be? I don't know. Maybe like we can put uh, in our integer value in. Yeah. In a string, something like. Oh, that. maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, they do try to be helpful like that sometimes. Um. So let's see. What's pause label? Okay. Jumped me all around here, so that was. This is the one we were at. Okay, pause label is none. Okay. I just want to know, like, because yeah, if it is just converting an int or a string to an int, then then I'm just gonna make the type an int. But if there's something that requires a string, then we'll have to make it a union. Pause label, not in present labels. Present labels. Present labels, unique labels. One of present labels. I wonder if this just reads column names from certain order of rate. Unique labels. One, two. Unique labels. Okay. So if positive will not approach, that looks like a int to me um not in, in one yeah i don't know why they have a stir annotation on that all right great <clears throat> sorry just want to make sure um so int and then we'll just copy their helpful little message there So, I wonder if we can grab it from, let's see, can we grab it from recall score, precision score? Can we grab it from what it would be 
actually. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking here. Okay, so first of all, we need to change this because this should be, you know, um, we want the ones we set to override. So args equals numpy doc string args. Let's say doc params properties is none properties equals no doc params else no doc params dot update properties now we'll override right um, you know the supplied value of properties will override the defaults um, so then okay we call make config um, and doc params here is going to be Nice, great, helpful error message or doc string, John. Um, doc params looks like it is clean up description. Okay, well, it must be something semi helpful that we okay to field. Okay, so it does type and then field. Um, NumPy clean up description. I must do type and then field. Yeah. Doc to field. So it creates a field. So we can grab the... If we do... Um, if we do... Thank you. NumPy doc string args. So we just do this numpy doc string args um, on method. Um, we can override. Yeah, we'll just do properties. Properties pause label. All right, so this is the field um, dot default. Where is the field default value stored? Default equals what was it two we were setting it to? Yes. All right, great. Um, okay, we'll just do this either way here. Default equals two, and then we'll just pass properties. Um, okay, so in this way, I mean, we'll end up parsing the doc string twice, but whatever. Um, cool. So, what did we end up doing here? Okay, so this guy ends up being self config predict export. Okay, only now it's going to have y true, or let's see. When we do the parsing there, okay, when we do parsing, it's going to, uh, it's going to want Y true and Y pred in the config, and obviously we don't want to take that in the config. So we'll probably want to say, um, we'll probably want to do, uh, to make doc string args. So we may just want to like do this make config ourselves here. So make uh, yeah we do we just want to do this ourselves. Uh, so we won't call actually make numpy config because we're doing too much custom stuff here. Um, so we don't want want 
to require um, what are they always they're always are they always y true and y pred uh, yes like sometimes it is y true y probability but the sense is same basically. okay so basically let's just let's just get rid of anything without a default then um, so properties equals right, we uh, remove any property without a value or a default value. Um, these uh, are always the um, why uh, the first two arguments to score, right? Um, or to the method, uh, which will provide be provided by um, Uh, they'll be provided by the base class score method, right? Um, score, yeah. That should be provided by scikit score context score. All right. So, um, for key comma, or for key comma, we don't care about the type, um, field in properties dot items. Okay, um, and properties to remove, uh, if field dot default equals, uh, what is that thing missing? Missing. Yeah, data classes dot missing or something, yeah. Is data classes dot missing. Uh, properties to So, yeah, uh, I should say, where should move? Okay, so for property remove and this, uh, and then we remove it, so. Okay. Um, is there a better way to do that? I wonder. Deleting a bunch of things. Clear. <laughs> Deleting a bunch of things at the same time. Move specify key. Update values. Yeah. Okay. No. Looks like that's the best way to do it. All right. Uh, data default values always. Fine. All right, let's see. Let's see what happened here. So, uh, we moved the pause label stuff into the scikit scores. Um, we are creating a new. We we create a config for each score. Um, uh, apparently, not very well though. Um, okay, 
so yeah so we move it in we create a config oh wait we forgot we can't do create numby config anymore we have to do just make config um Really? Let me do it that way. Okay, whatever. I am not the auto formatter. Alright, so this is so make config. Okay. Um All right, so we basically do our own sort of make numpy config where we do we get rid of those ones that don't have default values and then we override the default value for pause label for these scores and then we set the config. So um, I think that's good then. We should have a way to print out the the config of diff uh, list. Uh. Alright, whatever. Um, my current environment just got nuked, I think. So, all right, so. Okay, so these are all our scores now. They have configs. Um, let's go back and look at everything else here. Wait a minute. I thought we just... Okay, yeah, no, that was correct. Right, so we moved that stuff out of there. Um, this all looks good. Um, entry points, class names, testing. Model type equals classification. All right, this looks like standard stuff. Okay. Um, okay, model type equals clustering. Great, great, great. Create a bunch of records. Class model dir name. And model dir is okay. So temp file temporary directory. Okay, so we don't want to do that. Um, so test scikit model. Okay, so also this needs to derive from. So this needs to derive from. Um, you know, async test case here. Um, okay, no, okay, I see you're deriving from async test case there. Okay, um, test scikit model. Okay, so you're creating a mix. Uh, is there any reason why we wouldn't just derive from async test case here? Uh, I don't know. All right, let's just do it then. So I do did it similar to how we were doing the scalar models. Okay, well now that's scarce. Just in place of uh, scorers, I used. Yeah. Now I'm now I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh God. Okay. Our model dir. Okay, at least we're cleaning it up here. Okay. Uh, too many windows. All right, and what do we need to change here? Okay. So doc equals 
properties is not and properties equals task commands. Otherwise, task okay. Wonderful. Um, we don't need this anymore. Um, let's see. So I think different util is in test case. I think that we probably, I mean, those scikit plugins are old, so we have had many things happen between now and then. Um, so we could probably just do, does this have a setup class? Doesn't have a setup class. Async test case. All right, so these test case directories are created. Okay, what are we doing here? Model dirt cleanup. Oh. Oh. Okay, I don't like. I'm not, I don't like this. All right, but the scikit classes put themselves. In. Okay, this means the way that this is done right now, it looks like, oh, okay, but because for every class, okay, yeah, okay, okay, right, because we're creating new instances of these, new instances of these classes. All right, never mind, never mind, never mind. Um, I forgot that we were creating new instances of every class, although we can still do this. Um, uh, let's keep it the same. Let's keep it the same. If it works there, it works here. Sorry, I forgot we're creating new instances of every class. All right. Um, <clears throat> All right. So, and we're deleting it. Okay. Nope. So, clustering data, this is just a comment? Yes. Okay. Actually, we are creating it below. Yeah. So, did you want to leave this as an example data? So, in the original tests, it was uh, left it like that. Okay, great. Yeah, that's good. Gives us an idea. Um, All right, and so we go through and we create so scores for reg and regressors, regression scores. All right, so we go through each of the regression scores, classification scores, classes. Okay, should we import these classifiers, classifiers, and regressors from the model test case file, or is there a difference in them? Uh, what was the question? I didn't get it. So, did we? Should we? Um, should we? Uh, should we? Okay. Um, should we import the? Um, sorry. All right. Uh, I'll just show. Okay. All right, so this here is all the same. Yep. I'm wondering if, okay, estimator, let's see if I estimator. So we don't, so let's see. Okay, so we may just want to inherit from that class. We've got a lot of similar data, feature data classification, feature data regression. Yes, we can do that. But uh, we, so we had actually a discussion on whether we should separate the models from the scores. Oh, I see. So you're doing this uh, in preparation, sort of. Yes, because okay. when we have to like uh, separate the models and the scores, then well, I think I think 
Yeah, okay. Good good thinking. Good thinking. Um I think that looking at the code, I think you know what we if I remember correctly, we talked about that, right? And then we were like, okay, if the code because cuz you're just really I mean, the reason for doing that is separating out dependencies and like lines of code. And I mean, the score implementation is what like um you know, model scikit Different model second. Model score, score base, scores, 251 lines. So I don't think that warrants a separate package at this point, especially. Um, I, I think I think we'll just leave it all together. So, um, I mean, unless you see, do, do, do you see more work happening here in the scikit scores? Uh, no, I think that's, that's all we can do with this. Okay. So in this case, I would say, let's just start importing stuff from the other file. Um, cause I don't think we'll split it out into its own, it's its own plugin. Um, be, yeah, I don't think we'll split it out into its own plugin. So I'm going to, uh, Uh, can't it just show me what pull requests we're on? Um, view. Okay, great. All right, eleven forty-six to GHPR comment. Um. <laughs> Okay, so let's say that we need to, okay, what do we need to do here? So we need to, um, come in, so have test cases, pull variables, and subclass from test, um, original test case class. Okay. And then we need to, what else do we need to do here? So, We need to Okay, we're gonna validate that the score stuff works. Okay, that the config stuff works. Um add tests for second scores. Alright, so these are the tests. Um and Okay, so that's, we're going to just, you know, reuse code where appropriate there. Uh, that's good. That's good. Um, oh, oh. All right, so this opens a, in also a uh, thing to think about for us is these giant lists of entry points um, and validating those somehow. So we should probably... Um, We should probably create an issue to track that. Um, no. So we need kind of like one of these CI checks that we keep adding. So CI uh, or test like till testing um, uh, test or validate that all classes or plugins of a given each type appear uh, in s or are registered as entry points. Um, all right, 
because we'll need this. We're trying to think about CI tests that will go across all the plugins um, and making sure that you have listed it in the entry points file if you've defined it as a class. Um, that so if, if you if for example inspect everything under model scikit and if we find that um, we ins we do inspect on everything under model scikit and we find anything that subclasses from accuracy score that doesn't get is not in this list then we would you know the test would fail um, just just so that uh, because I see this I see this I mean this 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 is going to become a problem. We, we we will we will inevitably forget to um, <laughs> uh, create. We will for inevitably forget to um, define define one of those um, or to export it. But we'll have written it. So um, so okay. So inspect all. Um, objects in a package or module and see if and the entry points uh, .txt or set up .py or set up .g for that package uh, to verify uh, a fail test if uh, an entry point a or class class was defined but not exported or registered. All right. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Mm uh, so. So have test case pull variable from the original test case file, and I think we're good then. Yep. Okay. So let I me just. What? Yep, I will do that. Okay, and then, um, so, and then the other thing we did here was. Okay, so we updated make config numpy. Um, okay. All right, so we updated make config numpy to uh, have properties override override uh, defaults or doc string for, uh, doc string with properties. Uh, Reduction. All right. <clears throat> Allow overriding duck string parsed uh, config parameters uh, with uh, fields and types uh, given via keyword argument properties. See what happens here. No, my doctor is not defined. Well, you know, I'm not surprised. I did not import it. 
Okay, so if this all works, then we're in the clear here. So. Um, and then base. Let's see. Okay, whatever. Oh, yeah, we got to do this little trick here. Um, you can do this when you unpack a dictionary. When you unpack a dictionary that has tuple in it, um, you can do that little, um, you can do that the parens and it'll unpack that too. Um, ah, come on. Uh, two point not found. All right. You know, we can let's just see here. Let's see what happens. All right, apparently I can't write code, okay. Okay, all right, all right, all right, I get it, I get it, it doesn't work. Um, okay, let's just try this one. Self.parent.config. All right, so so scikit scores config. That doesn't have an export method. That's interesting. We should probably have an export method if it doesn't already. Um, so what are we doing in model scikit is the question. Uh, model scikit, or in the models. Uh, scikit models. Okay. Uh, now I went to base one. Um, okay, second base. All right. Um, as dict. Wait. Yeah, okay, Aztec. All right, great. So that seems to be happy. Um, except for something. So we um, uh, provide config objects uh, each score. So we've provided a config for each score. Uh, we will have the test case pull variables and subclass in the original test case. 
Um, second models, okay, unrelated. Um, provide config for each store, and was there anything else? I don't think so. <clears throat> yeah, that was it. All right, great. Um, and we made that commit. Uh, get stash. Uh, and add psychic or classes. So it'll be this guy. All right. So, and then this is this actually has to go first, doesn't it? All right. Okay. I think we're good. Um, so do you want to talk about the other one or you want to take it offline? I think we might have to, um, clean up operations. Yep. We can take it offline. All right. Okay. We'll do that because we're, you know, way over here. So, all right. Um, anything else? Did we get CI passing or failing on anything we just did? I see you've, you've, uh, you're using the test book here. Um, yeah, it's obviously failing on the one that I was waiting on the release, and it's still running on the others that I just replaced. Okay, cool. Um, I think it's failing in Master 2 based on that release, so we can probably just safely... Is it just... Is it just the... Um, yeah. Is it just that that's failing in that, in that PR? Um, like, it can't install... Is it mad because it can't install it? Uh, are you talking about the one with the release? Uh, yeah, the one with this guy. Yeah, yeah, it's actually failing on every test because it can't install it. <laughs> wow, that's just concerning. The container one passes. Oh, yeah, I think we have an open issue actually to track this. Um, wow, that's a lot of little scroll bars there. Um, all right, every single thing fails. Okay, let's not merge this. I, I was about to say, let's just merge this, but we will uh, hold off on that until the uh, later in today. All right, so, and then I'll say, uh, John, to review offline. Great. Um, and we need to say that we updated, updated, scikit, um, or make, config numpy uh, to um, did it make config numpy to um, uh, allow for overriding um, parsed uh, fields all right <clears throat> cool um, I think we're good here anything else from anyone Final thoughts. All right, great. Thanks, guys. Have have a good one. Yep. Bye. Bye.